Hello and welcome to New Frontiers on CCTV International. I'm Chi Chang in Beijing. And today in our program, we are continuing with our major series about Chinese civilization. Now, Chinese Bronze Age began in the Xia Dynasty some 4,000 years ago. The following Shan Dynasty was, to judge by the magnificent bronze wares from the period that have been discovered, a time of considerable prosperity. This is evident, in particular, from a site known as the Yin Ruins, Yin having been the Shang capital. The site, close to today's city of Anyang, 500 kilometers south of Beijing, contains the only fully intact tomb of a member of the Shang imperial family. The tomb of Fu Hao has yielded almost 500 pieces of exquisite bronzeware, including some vessels, the like of which had never been seen before. However, the discovery left the archaeologists wondering where had all the copper come from for making so much bronze. The emergence of bronze smelting and bronze vessels marked the time in which China entered a great bronze age that was to last more than 1,500 years through the Xia, Shang and Zhou dynasties. And it was in this period of world civilization that ancient China began to make great advances. The bronze vessels discovered in China are first in the world in terms of quantity and degree of exquisite craftsmanship. Also appearing in the bronze age, are the oracle bone inscriptions of the Shang dynasty found in the Yin ruins. These oracle bone inscriptions mark the beginning of the time in China from which objects and era can be identified by characters. Just one kilometer from the palace of the king and city of Yin, there was a Shang Dynasty bronze foundry that covered an area of 10,000 square meters. Although numerous craftsmen worked in the foundry, only the king himself could make decisions about the dynasty's output of bronze, the varieties of objects made, and their scale. Shang Dynasty craftsmen not only mastered the bronze-making arts they had inherited from their ancestors, but also developed a unique combination of pottery molds to make very large bronze vessels. They pounded sun-baked clay into pieces and mixed this clay with fine sand that contained a large amount of quartz. They then carved different designs on the clay and after drying the results became pottery molds. Because each mold could be used only once, no two bronze objects of the same design have ever been found at the Yin ruins. Bronze objects were made by turning copper ore into molten copper, which was then poured into a pottery object called a general helmet. Sometimes this object was used as a crucible. Such small-sized copper furnaces have remained in use to the present day, the only difference being that today's furnace operators must wear a special face mask to protect themselves against the heat, as the temperature of molten copper reaches more than 1,200 degrees centigrade. The large Simu Wu Ding weighs 875 kilograms, making it the largest object made of bronze excavated anywhere in the world. To maintain a large-scale bronze foundry, great quantities of ore were needed. The bronze articles unearthed from the tomb of Fu Hao alone come to a combined weight of more than 1,600 kilograms, requiring at least eight tons of copper ore. 
However, so far, no Shang Dynasty mining and smelting base has been found near the Yin ruins, and this leads us to wonder where the ore came from. These beautiful small flowers called Haizhou Xiang Ru are also known as Tung Xiao grass, which means copper rust grass. They flourish on the sites of old copper mines. This place, more than 900 kilometers from the Yin ruins, is located in today's Rui Chang city in Jiangxi province. This lone wooden pole was erected by Shang people as part of the supporting frame of a mine more than 3,000 years ago, evidence of the earliest mining and smelting site in China. Tung Lu Shan, located in Daye City, Hubei province to the northwest of Ruichang, is one of the six top copper bases in China. Here, the Shang people built tunnels that led to underground mines, and working underground, the miners chose rocks bearing malachites sparkling with an emerald luster and had them sent up to the surface by means of wooden tackle. Most of the copper resources needed to make articles of bronze for the Shang capital probably originated from the Tung Lu Shan mine. As the areas along the middle reaches of the Yangtze River possessed an abundance of such strategic resources, the Shang Dynasty king would certainly have strengthened his control over this area. So, the whole Shang Dynasty king would certainly 不断的扩大不断的华夏化It is recorded many times in the oracle bone inscriptions unearthed from the Yin ruins that the Shang dynasty was once associated with southwestern Shu, which was far from Shang territory. Shu was short for what is today's Sichuan province, yet the state of Shu of ancient times is still wrapped in the mist of history. This place is called Sanxingdui. What remains at Sanxingdui is the remnants of an ancient city wall and the wall can be clearly seen. To the ancient people of Shu, the thick city wall and what it enclosed would have seemed like a fort. Today, it ushers in groups of uninvited guests who have heard that someone knocked on the gate of this wall and that it opened to reveal the secrets of an ancient kingdom. In the summer of 1986, several workers were digging through the hard soil with their hose, none of them having any idea that mixed in with the soil were cracked pieces of pottery, broken bones, and valuable objects of jade. Soon, no one was allowed to use the soil to make bricks, and the entire block of land, once part of the ancient state of Shu, was under protection. The gate to a mysterious kingdom dating back more than 3,000 years was about to be opened in what would prove to be a truly sensational discovery. When the rammed earth and the excavation pit was cleared away, a miracle of archaeology was revealed. Unearthed at San Xingdui were a large number of vessels made of gold, the wealth of a king protected by troops of roaring tigers. These tomb guardians standing underground had fulfilled their duty to the kingdom for more than 3,000 years. This 因为就是说他是在这个地方上
The bronze wares uncovered from Sanxingdui have a unique local style. But the really strange thing about Sanxingdui culture is that no mention of it has ever been found in historical records. The ancient and mysterious state of Shu had finally been found, and just like the Shang Dynasty in central China, it had a highly developed bronze civilization. But who had been the master of the ancient state of Shu? The people of Shu had not left behind any written clues. This object, which looks rather like a steering wheel, gleams in its bronze splendor. Legend has it that the man who established the ancient state of Shu and became its first king was named Tan Tung. It is also said that he had protruding eyes and was actually called vertical eyes. However, people had never been able to imagine what these vertical eyes looked like until one day another sensational discovery was made. Is this the image of a person or an animal? The appearance of this face mask made of bronze certainly startles everyone. Completely different in shape from those unearthed from Sanxingdui, it has eyes that protrude as much as 20 centimeters. Can this be the legendary Tan Tong, the ancestor of the Shu people? Perhaps this is an image of Tan Tong made to protect the state of Shu he founded, a state that became another center of civilization far from central China. But if so, what did the ancient people of Shu use as the basis for this image of their great ancestor? In spite of the fact that a great many bronze statues had already been excavated from the ancient state of Shu, the last find greatly surprised everyone standing bronze figure 262 centimeters high. Such a huge bronze statue from this time had never been found in China or anywhere else in the world. The figure wears a high hat and his clothes are decorated with dragon and phoenix designs and various animal mask designs. But what was he holding so tightly in his hands? He stands with bare feet on a square-shaped platform that also bears animal masks designs. Who can he be? It has been surmised that this mysterious figure might well have been a king of the ancient state of Shu. Also unearthed from the San Qingdui site were many articles in the shape of birds, their elegant bodies reminding us of phoenixes in the sky. Legend has it that for several generations the names of all Shu kings were related to birds. One of them was called Yu Fu or Fish Mallard. We know that in ancient times China's tribes took the phoenix as their totem, as the use of this totem has also been seen in Da Wenko culture and Hu Mu Du culture. However, ancient documents from the Central Plain claim that the offspring of the kings of Shu were descendants of the Yellow Emperor the great emperor of the Xia dynasty. If so, then the two civilizations developed in parallel. Naturally, people were greatly excited by the great San Qingdui discoveries. When this bronze tree appeared, a crane and wooden frame had to be used to raise it into place. Although the tree is broken at the top, it is still nearly four meters high and archaeologists have called it a deity tree. The base on which the tree stands looks like a mountain, and the overall impression is that the tree growing out of the mountain is a heavenly tree. The trunk has three layers of branches from which hang fruit, and various flying birds stand on the fruit. 
In ancient Shu, people believed that high mountains and big trees were steps that led to the sky. Flying birds, meanwhile, were regarded as envoys coming and going between the earth and heaven, passing information. Scholars believe that the bronze tree might represent Fu Sang, a place inhabited by the sun god. Certainly, it would seem that at the very least, the deity tree symbolizes the reverence accorded the sun by the Shu people. Shangdai 是吧？你比如你看，它那有垒啊，有尊呐，啊，有各样的器物。这些个器物，你可以看有的和中原地区或者受中原地区影响的啊，其他的一些地区都有很密切的关系，差不多是一样。The bronze zuan and bronze lei and other ritual vessels unearthed from Sanxingdui are very similar in shape and style to those from the Shang Dynasty on the Central Plain, and clearly, they originated from Shang culture. Dragons, so often seen in other parts of China, were also sacred in the minds of ancient Shu people. Scholars believe these bronze zuan and bronze lei indicate that a courtesy system operated in the land of Shu, and that there was a kind of peaceful cultural exchange with the Shang dynasty. Archaeologists believe that the large number of bronze items and ivory items unearthed from San Qingdui may have been left behind by the ancient people of Shu after some important ritual activity or sacrificial ceremony. Let's imagine such a sacrificial offering ceremony of the ancient Shu people more than 3,000 years ago. The king is the chief diviner. His very power comes from the people's faith in him. Large amounts of regional wealth are concentrated here and used as sacrificial offerings to ancestors and deities. The sacred stateliness of it all amazes his people. But in a raging fire, the deity tree disappears and the king too vanishes. Eventually, the ancient state of Shu also dies away. And 300 years later, the character for Shu is found only on the oracle bone inscriptions unearthed from the Yin ruins. The appearance of these oracle bone inscriptions marks the point at which China enters a period in the ancient past that can be verified through characters. The oracle bones bearing the earliest known examples of Chinese characters are without doubt among the most significant discoveries made at the Yin ruins. To date, more than 150,000 animal bones and tortoise shells have been unearthed at the site, providing scholars with some invaluable historical and linguistic information. The oracle bone inscriptions of the Yin ruins boast the earliest Chinese characters ever found, and these characters appear in places where sacrificial activities were frequently held by kings of the Shang dynasty. Every day, the Shang king would ask a fortune teller to foretell everything. The weather, the harvest, whether hunting would be good, or whether there would be victory in battle. All the foretellings that resulted from the reading of omens were recorded on tortoise shells or on the shoulder blades of oxen. And these became the state archive of the Shang dynasty. The characters recorded on the tortoise shells and bones are referred to as oracle bone inscriptions.
，没有任何一个国家的历史，一个一一一个历史上啊，它一种文字可以延续几千年，和一种可读性的文字可以持续延续两千年。比如我们现在的中学生，只要你稍微背上几篇《古文观止》的古文，读上点唐诗，你就可以阅读，比如唐代的一千四五百年前的唐诗，你就可以读两千年前的司马迁写的《史记》。就基本能够看懂他的意思，但是呢，在欧洲，不要说这个两千年前，也就是像现在莎士比亚的一些一些一一些剧作，著名的剧作原文，恐怕现在说英语的人未必能读懂。这就是我们民族的文化能够延续，而且比较应该说完整的延续的一个重要的一个文化基因。The legend's Tang Jie's invention of words familiar to all Chinese indicates that ancient Chinese people paid great attention to the origin of Chinese characters. As written characters are an indicator of civilization, the birth of characters announces the beginning of the history of human civilization. As the oracle inscriptions on tortoise shells and bones of the Yin ruins reveals, Chinese characters originated before the Shang dynasty. The number of different words appearing in oracle inscriptions on tortoise shells comes to more than 4,000, and so far, at least 1,500 of these have been identified. Scholars now believe that the number of characters used by Shang people exceeded 5,000, and perhaps numbered as many as 6,000. It was a logical and mature character system, and as such, it made an important contribution to both Chinese and world civilization. 汉字的不同的单字，是吧？现在的这个呃，最多的字典呢，达到六六七万字，六七万个，是吧？我们日常的使用的也也也也有啊，就是七八千，甚至一万字左右。那么这个数量都是非常大的。可是大家知道，这这个汉汉语汉字里面所谓字，是吧？那不是这个呃，比方说一这个英语里面所说的 word， 我们叫 character， 是吧？它不是 word。啊，这个英语里头的一个这个 word， 呃，不等于中国的一个字。中国一个字可以组成很多很多的词，有很多很多种意思，这个是不能够完全对比的。所以中国的这个呃这个字词呢，在世界上是最丰富的这个之一啊。那么呃，比起英语或其他的一些个语言呢，绝无逊色。Carved symbols used earlier on pottery. were later used to create oracle bone inscriptions and inscriptions on bronze, and these were followed by minuscule script, Chinese official script, and regular script, all of them bearing Chinese characters, which have been an important carrier of Chinese civilization. So-called oracle bone inscriptions were also carved on tortoise shells, but in fact, during the Shang dynasty, writing tools mainly consisted of brushes. Characters recorded at that time were written on bamboo slips using brushes to record official records. Unfortunately, however, as bamboo slips rot easily, so far no standard books of the Shang dynasty have been found. But we can see from the oracle bone inscriptions of the Yin ruins that the characters used then were quite different from today's Chinese characters in terms of style. That said, there is no great difference in the method used to construct a character. The Chinese character system is unique, completely different from any other language in the world. Without doubt, the invention of oracle bone inscriptions was the greatest invention and creation of the Chinese nation, setting in motion the use of a character system that has lasted to the present day. Although the land of China is vast and a great variety of dialects are spoken from one end to the other, its unique system of Chinese characters has enabled its people to access areas where different dialects prevail. The character system has also influenced the people's way of thinking and expression through literature, maintaining the continuation of Chinese civilization and playing a highly important role in China's long-term unification. As we all know, there were four great civilizations of the ancient world, namely Egyptian, Mesopotamian, Indian, and Chinese. But of these four, only Chinese civilization can claim to have survived uninterrupted to the present day. That's over 5,000 years.
Now, in my opinion, this impressive feat owes much to Chinese characters, which comprise one of the world's oldest writing systems that is still in use today. By recording the entire history of China's ages-old civilization, the characters act as some sort of cohesive power that spans time and space, binding Chinese civilization together. And thank you for staying with us on today's New Frontiers. I'm Ji Xiaojun from CCTV International. Bye for now.